Some conflicts are just different. They, they grow and they spread and they make people miserable until they seem really impossible to solve. I mean, they can suck people in and, and take over their lives. This is the 5% problem. So a few years ago, our research team was working on a problem of gang violence in a school in the South Bronx in New York City. The school had been struggling for years with intimidation and vandalism and theft by gang members at the school. And the problems would, you know, come and go, but they were never gone. For example, they'd been recently given a new well-equipped computer room by a corporate donor, but they couldn't use it because when they unlocked it and let students in, everything would get stolen. Then, over a period of about 18 months, Three boys were killed. One 17-year-old boy shot himself. Another was attacked by rival gang members. And a third, a 12-year-old boy, was stabbed to death. Tensions then between two of the gangs got really bad, and the school was afraid of retaliations. It was a bad situation that just kept getting worse, and the families and the administrators and the teachers at the school all felt totally burned out and hopeless about the situation. So we went in and we started to talk to members of the community to try to get a sense of the main causes of the problem, you know, to try to, to try to map it. And then we noticed something interesting. When we would talk to people familiar with the conflict but not in it, you know, the, the principal and the social workers and the a priest that was involved, there was a very strong sense of how complicated the problem was. That it was not just one thing that drove these kids into gangs and violence, but in fact it was many different things, you know, miserable housing and violent role models and drug money and bad health care and even environmental toxins like lead paint that reduces impulse control in kids. You know, it's complicated. But when we talk to the people in the conflicts, you know, the, the youth themselves or the gang leaders themselves, to them, the problem was very simple. They were the problem, you know, the other group. They were the punks and the murderers that made our life hell. They were crazy and they were the ones the cops better deal with or else. That was the simple truth. And what we realized is that they're both right. It was very complicated, but to the people involved, it was very simple. And what we found at this school in the Bronx is what we see in intractable conflicts all over the world. The longer they last, the more they tend to intensify and spread, which in turn makes them last a lot longer. It, it's a feedback loop. And the more they spread, and the more people involved feel threatened, the more the conflict seems very simple, you know, it's good versus evil, it's us versus them. So during the Cold War, this happened with the U.S. and the Soviet Union. In the Middle East, it's, it's Muslim and Jew, or Sunni and Shiite. Here, it's Republican and Democrat. This dynamic, when more and more complicated situations tend to be seen as more and more simple, is actually a very natural psychological process that's very common and, and sometimes necessary, but it can get way out of control. So the next time that you find yourself in the midst of a long-term conflict where everything seems very simple and you're tempted to blame the other side for everything that's happened, remember things aren't always what they seem to be. There are powerful forces operating that are really shaping how you understand the situation. And by simply knowing that, we can help to prevent these things from getting way out of control and maybe resolve them.